Hello and welcome to the Online Marketing Show, the place where you can find information about how to grow your online business and market yourself so that you can turn your followers into customers. Today's episode, I'm talking all things sales pages. As you may know, on this YouTube channel, I talk an awful lot about the importance of landing pages and funnels and how they can be used for you to generate more leads into your business. One thing that we haven't touched upon yet is how sales pages differ from landing pages and how these come into play also. I'm going to hand over for you to listen to the rest of the episode. This is an interview with the wonderful Donita, who is a website specialist who does an awful lot of work around sales pages and even websites that act as sales pages. But I'm going to leave it to her to explain to you all the things that you should be looking out for in creating a good sales page. This is a longer one. This is about 25 minutes. So make sure that you've got yourself a cup of tea and settle in. So hello and welcome, Denita. Thank you so much for joining us today. I thought rather than myself trying to introduce you, I'd like to ask you to introduce yourself to the listeners today and explain a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what you're going to be helping the listeners with today. Thanks so much, Nathan. So my name is Denita. I'm a brand and website designer at Webstation. So I think we help small businesses um, build commission for this website as well as fun. Yes, so today I plan to share the basics of um, sales files and um, sales pages. Amazing. Uh, the listeners are probably sick of hearing me talk about sales funnels, so it'll be nice to hear <laughs> someone else's perspective. Um, I've done so many tutorials on kind of the male side of things, um, but we never really talk about sales pages when we talk about funnels. We focus so much on the email marketing element because that's absolutely my favorite bit so my bias slips in there I wondered if you wouldn't mind explaining what a sales page is and what people should expect to see when they're thinking of a sales page yeah so a sales page is simply just like doing one web page that is focused on like converting a user into a client so that's literally the main purpose of it so it's not like a you know with a website it's multiple pages but the sales page has just one page and usually sells one product or so. Okay. And how is that different from a landing page? I guess people will get confused because it's very similar in the sense that they have the same focus, which is to convert. It's similar to a sales page, but a landing page usually has multiple posts. It's not just to sell a product. It could be to like um, build a list in exchange of a, a ebook, a freebie, that sort of thing. Like, it could be any purpose, like yeah. whatever that helps the business to generate lead. Yeah, so it's technically gener like a lead generation strategy. That's the, the thing that I always see. When I think of a landing page, typically, I think of kind of that swap your email for your freebie type of landing page. And I think when I think of sales pages, to be really honest, I, I think of those dodgy click funnels, sales pages that have be sort of overly salesy and almost to a point where you kind of want to get off of the page. So with that, what makes a good sales page? Because I feel like even my knowledge as a marketer and my thoughts when I think of sales page immediately goes to that negative place of all oh, the dodgy ones. A good sales page, they have probably like five features. The first one is a good copywriting. Like words really matter with the sales page. With website, you can throw in any words, but with sales page, like each word um, really helps the customer to make a decision. You know? That's so interesting to me that that's the first point that you have down because I think that's probably the thing in a lot of people's brains that would be the last priority. They kind of would be so much about technically building it and copywriting is just like, yeah, just going to put some, some words on the screen. So that's a brilliant way to, to kind of reshape people spoke this. Yeah, um, I guess when you start, you don't know most of what you do. <laughs> and as you are able to like, you know, scale and hire people, that's when you realize, oh, I need a copywriter. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? Just getting started. I don't know what I'm doing now. <laughs> I don't know. I guess most of the time you're just doing whatever was the board to really. Yeah. yeah. Um, copy, like, I think that's the key determinant. Like, it's very important. Honestly, like, the customer will be daily converted by reading what you have in the sales model. The image is important, but like that's the main part. Yeah. Mm. But also the amount of information you put in the sales page. So it can't be just like everything. It can't be just like a, you know, like a 
global warming. <laughs> it has to be like, it needs to have like tear in the middle part. So not too much, not too, uh, not too. When you are speaking to business owners and they're building out their sales page, what do you think makes good copywriting? Is there anything that they should include when they're writing for their sales page? I, I think when you're writing copy, you need to focus on really one thing. Like you have to think the way of the customer, like what's in it for them. So tackling every part of like what the customer's thing, like what their objections are, why they pay for it. I think those, those are the key things. Yeah. I think I see a lot of people do very feature heavy sales pages of you get this, you get that. And I think <laughs> to be really blunt about it, I feel like that's a good stance to, to tell people what your product is. I don't think it's a good option to sell your product because mm-hmm. I do think people need emotion to make a sale, like put, to put their money where their mouth is, they need to understand that that it, it's personal, it's going to help you in some ways. So if it's just like a long list of features, yeah, I can see how needing to connect to your ideal customer is the most important thing there. This is so much about what we talk about within Red as well. And um, some of the people who uh, are listening might know that I did a, a full like ideal customer campaign recently where I sent out templates for how to build out your ideal customer. And there's a YouTube video breaking down like step by step this template and, and what elements you need to make a good ideal customer. And I, I got asked a few times, like, why though? Like, why do I need my ideal customer? And it's exactly because of, because of things like this. You mentioned needing to connect with your ideal customer and, and that they need to understand what's in it for them. I feel like if you know who they are, doesn't that become so much easier than if you were just to kind of, yeah, I think I'm going to sell to businesses <laughs> and you don't really break it down. It becomes harder to, to find those pain points. Exactly. Um, you said there were five elements that make up a good sales page. What's the next one that you've got? So the second one is imagery. So images, it could be diagrams, photos, anything showcasing results for the customer. Always in relevant images. It can't be just random, like an image of a mushroom. Everything has to be intentional. Like a sales page, everything, every bit is intentional. It's just, it's not just a random thing. And it's very important to make sure that the images are like, can be actually seen, like clear, a high quality, looks may do matter. Like, yeah. you know, like if you want to come across as a credible person, you need to put like high quality stuff. <laughs> People do judge you. Mm-hmm. Like humans will always judge you. Like. The first impressions, realistically, high quality images, we're not meaning anything done on kind of a super high level photographer camera. It can be iPhone, right? High quality anything like it can be easily seen. Like it doesn't need to be like full on professional photo shoot. Like some people, like they have very pixelated, like not legible <laughs> photo dance. Yeah, I'm with you. And what is your stance on using stock imagery on a sales page? I, I I ask because I'm I'm one of the the people that thinks that it's not a good idea, only because I think it's not personal enough. And when you're trying to get yeah, someone to sell, I feel like they have to know you, they have to like you, and they have to trust you, right? You've got to go through that funnel, the the, the mindset, and go through the the funnel with them. If you aren't there and you're you're still too early in the sales journey. And you go onto a site and it's just like random stock images. It would feel like a scam to me. I'd be like, oh, those aren't real people. I'm not sure if this is a real thing. And it would start to make my, me as a buyer become a little bit more defensive. Oh, no, no, no. Why you say it's completely right. I think people overuse stock images and they don't use them very relevant. There's a way, there's no way of using them. Why well, can't I just to show their real base? And then at the end of the day, you try to sell to humans. And we just try and like, like if you could just use human psychology, you could say, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Okay. So what's next on your kind of steps to making a good sales page? The third feature is like call to action. So the call to action is typically the action that you want your customer to take. There are two types of sales pages. So one is the show one and the low one. So the show one. That's good for not expensive, like affordable, cheap sort of products or product and service you're trying to sell. It's more simple, like for example, $1 ebook. 
normally you would use a small sales page. But for a like a expensive product, you need a longer sales page. So and it'll be more complex in Asia and it, there'll be more like content and it will require more time commitment for the customer because they obviously go, will be going through everything. So obviously when you buy like luxuries like product or service, like you would want you would want to learn more about it. With this like a short one, it's very short and sweet. You exactly know what you're getting for. I had that written down to ask you about high ticket sales pages as well. So I'm going to jump off topic here for two seconds and ask that question. Do you think that sales pages work for high ticket services and products? Or do you think that more more manpower is needed in in getting that sales to convert? Yeah, definitely. So um, for high ticket, a long form sales page would be beneficial. Yeah. It's, it's definitely more complex because like, because it's longer, you have to, obviously with sales pages, it requires a lot of strategy. Mm -hmm. Like I said before, you can't just put anything. That's why before you build the sales page, we need to plan it out and structure it. And then like, backs up with research. Yeah. yeah I feel like there's usually some more um, person to person contact needed when it's a high ticket sale. Cause usually people are going to be. A little bit more cautious. Like you said, if it's one dollar ebook, you'd be like, oh, okay, I'll buy it. Like, you don't even need to think about it very much. I'll buy it. <laughs> exactly. when, it when it's something that's looking into like thousands and thousands of pounds or, or dollars, um, I feel like people want to be convinced. I feel like they want to talk to someone to ask any of those questions um, that they might have. So I kind of think of sales pages for high ticket as almost the proposal. You still have to like, do a sales call and, and all of the back and forth. That's how you cinch it. That's the final piece that you send over to them for them to hit pay. Exactly. And with a long sales page, um, like this, obviously going to be more content. And the content is you have to do a lot of committing. So to help with convincing, you need to add like a lot of reviews, testimonials, and disclaimers, frequently asked questions, more information about the products. Like you have to be very detailed. I also have diagrams, why exactly what they will get, the process, what they will achieve, results, that's okay. Yeah. So it's more information to build trust. And going back then to the, the kind of the CTA, the call to action element, what are your thoughts about the multi button approach? Because I feel like it's being uptaken a lot more now. The best practice of web design and, and what people used to follow was you don't want it's more than one button because you're going to confuse people if you've got multiple. Do you think there's an exception to that rule when you're talking about sales pages? I totally believe in like focus. If you could just have one call to action, I think that's the best way to sell. And like, so with a sales model or sales page, like the purpose is to eliminate instructions and get to the points for the customer to just buy. And I feel like if you have multiple aims and goals, it's going to mess everything up. To clarify my question there a little bit more, what I'm referring to is not having different uh, end goals. So the CTA is the same, but having like lots and lots of different buttons that all say buy now or like you click here to sign up and they, they all go to the same place and they've got the same format. But I feel like previously um, web developers would advise that each page should have one to two buttons maximum so that you're not kind of distracting the eye and, and there's only one clear place to go. I don't know whether it's because sales pages are so long, but I, I feel like I see these days that you kind of scroll part way and there's a call to action. You scroll a little bit more and the same call to action kind of repeats later down the page. What are your thoughts on, on that element? Oh, okay. Okay. Sometimes people put too much buttons, <laughs> too much calls. Yeah, there's obviously just like a middle way, not, not too much, not too little. For most high ticket sales pages are long. They're very long. <laughs> they probably could be longer than a website. Mm -hmm. It's one page. When I design sales pages, I don't put the calls to action very close together. So if it's a webinar sales um, page, it's usually it's like the, the video and then there's a bit of information about the webinar. And then some testimonials, whatever. So after testimonials, you can put a like call to action maybe. And then, and then you can put other information, more information on service, something else, and then call to action. 
like it was closer to like the information load that's probably when you should really call to action maybe as well when the next kind of objection is addressed there's a natural breakdown on some sales pages where kind of you you're reading it and you're asking yourself the question yeah but what about such and such what about how much is going to cost or what about how long is the program and you read the next sec- next section and it answers all those questions and i feel like it's always they always almost get me because then after all my questions have been answered there's another little call to action button exactly. and it's, 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 it takes me along the journey with them okay so what's your next element that makes a good sales page it's telling the information about the product or service yeah so we always do the copywriting, the imagery, the course of action, now the information. Like that's not, obviously, it's going to be a big chunk. Know your product more than anyone else. <laughs> so it's very important for the customer to be the same page as you. You need to make sure the customer knows exactly what your product and service is. Just tell exactly the product, its features, the problem is solved, like frequently asked questions, the results that can be helped from their clients or customers to achieve, that sort of thing. Yeah. In the age of the online business as well, there's so many sales pages that uh, if you went and read them, they say something about joining my system or my program. And it it never actually breaks down what that is. I feel like there's a lot of buzzwords these days, coaches who are developing systems or my my unique lead generation system, my unique business growth system. And it never becomes clear as to what the system is is it a course is it coaching like how is this broken down and it kind of reminds me of a quote from a book that i've read at least five times <laughs> and that's the the building building a story brand by donald miller and he stands in it and i swear i hear his voice echo in my brain all the time he says if you confuse you lose and yeah i feel like that's exactly it. Yeah. yeah there's so many of the, the kind of new age of online coaches who are really embracing this kind of that they need a signature product almost to the point where they're hiding what their product is even on a sales page is that exactly you know first of all like it's very hard to even sell this signature program if the customers have no idea why it is yeah. like you need to give the answer you could just tell what what the service will help achieve so I've got a secret trick that I do with this this element. When I get to this point where I've got the information and I've got the copywriting in, the images are there, the call to actions are there. I I will send a sales page to my nan. <laughs> it's like a running joke that it, I send sales pages to her. I send her like long lines. If we're working on one of those like I help statements for our for our clients or for ourselves, my nan is my first veto. If I send her something. And I ask her, like, what does this mean to you? And and her not really being in the in the marketing world, like that's all, all foreign to her. If she reads it and her thing her response is, I think this means and it's something wrong, I'm like, right, I've got more work to do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That that is very helpful. Like I think yeah, daily better testing is very important. Mm-hmm. Like the thing is when you look at your own sales page or website, you always already drop the certain way of thinking. Like it's kind of fixed. Yeah. So it's very hard for you to change. Mm-hmm. Like if you give someone who's like unbiased, they just see the way it is, you're going to get valuable feedback. Yeah. And not just that, I feel like we all use jargon in our industry. Like we're even, we're saying CTA, uh, sales pages. Like oh, yeah. if, if we were talking to somebody who'd never know about marketing, who wasn't in the online business world, they're probably like, what are you talking about? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And I feel like every industry does it. We're all guilty of it. There's jargon in everything from lawyers to plumbers. There's there's jargon for it. So I feel like getting somebody who just doesn't understand your industry is completely foreign to it. Means that if you are leaning into that trap of using buzzwords, you're going to get called out on it and be able to kind of make things clear. So it's very important to ensure that the customers see the pages to you. So with buzzword, like if necessary, you probably just have to instead of saying CTA, just just say the full word, like call to action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like if you don't have to stop using buzzwords, you could just like make clearly definable. So was there one more? Did I is there one more that I've kind of lost count as we're talk, talking? So the fifth one is addressing objection as well as clearly defining their pain point. Because honestly, no one would buy something if they 
think they don't have a problem. <laughs> so you need to clearly define the problem they have and showcase your service or product as the solution for that problem. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's very important to clearly define the problems that they currently have. So that's why it's important to say, oh, like, are you experiencing this? And then you have a list of like, all the people. Yeah. And so uh, yeah, people, people like to tick boxes that say, oh yeah, that's me. That's definitely me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that, that helps with that. As well as the lovely important thing is obviously clearing any objection. One thing that I'm noticing is a trend at the minute is people doing everything that they can to sort of break objections. And I think in the online business space that, that my audience are in, that I'm in, so often the big question is, how can I guarantee a return on investment? And I'm seeing a real big uptake at the minute in people offering money back guarantees. So get a return on investment or get your money back. And even so far as get a return on investment or get your money back and I'll actually give you extra money for the inconvenience of wasting your time. I guess with coaching and with some of the course elements, a lot of it can be down to the person. So I'm wondering, is it necessary to offer things like a money back guarantee or do you think that's just a, a trend that's happening at the moment? Well, I think, so those businesses who, who offer that kind of like offers and guarantees, like it all comes back to their confidence. Are they able to deliver with results? If they have a confidence and they have a track record, sure, that's all right. But if they can't, that's not great. Right <laughs> I feel it's yeah, like, because like, you know, results vary depends on the person, it really depends on the business. If they, if they can actually deliver the work and and it's very unlikely they need to give back the money, then that's fine. Yeah. yeah, I guess it depends on your service because if it's something like for me, I know that would terrify me because a lot of the people that I work with, um, it, it's coaching, it's training, like whatever they take away from our sessions is broken down and I know that they're going to get everything they need. What I don't know is if they're going to do everything that they need to take the next step. So I think a lot of people can fall into that trap of wanting to compete with um, the huge kind of seven figure coaches and offer many back guarantees when a lot of the results are variable to what your client is, is actually doing. Um, and on the flip side of that, the other thing that I see an awful lot, if it's not a money back guarantee, it's like focusing on, on money numbers for your client. So we talked about pain points. We talked about kind of addressing your ideal customer. I do see an awful lot of, are you trying to hit a 10 K month? Like sign up now to hit your first 10 K month. And I've got to say, I'm not a fan of that. I think it's really, it's, it's almost opening yourself up for litigation like if you said that and somebody doesn't reach their their 10k month guaranteed it's a different type of guarantee but it's still something that if your customer signs up and doesn't receive that then technically you could get sued right exactly um i it's an actual problem i feel like marketing these days are just too like deceptive it can be deceptive they kind of over promise like yay and unfortunately, like they get away. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah, like you said before, you can actually get into really problems, like promising things. So I, mean, I guess why, what a customer can, I mean, a business can do to prevent any legal issues is to just promise something they can actually obviously keep. <laughs> yeah. Like, for example, like, are you ready to up level your business? Like, I, well, are you able to create systems in your business? Like, obviously, create systems that can be easily done. It doesn't require risk. Like, promise something that can actually be done. Like, you know, money, it really depends. Yeah, and I feel like if you want to, if you want to focus in on the the ten k month, which I use because I feel like it's the it's so common. <laughs> the ten k month seems to be what everyone's able to. <laughs> I feel like there's another way you can deliver that as well. So we've talked about changing your language to make sure that you're guaranteeing a delivery. So things like putting systems in place. But I feel like just use your testimonials. If you want to say ten, uh, the importance of helping people scale to a specific figure, I think rather than claiming that you could do that for everybody, can you just say, here's Jim, John, and Bob who all worked with me and now they're all on 10K months. And, and you're kind of explaining to whoever's on the other side that like this is what can happen if you work with me without trying to make any claims and guarantees that could get you in exactly, hot water. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's exactly, that's it. That's a great idea. Like, just let the results speak to itself. 
Okay, I have one more question for you. Why do you think a sales page is important? Lots of people immediately go to, they set up a website and they get that done pretty much within their first couple of months of business, but not necessarily a sales page. Do you think everyone need, needs it and why is it so important? Well, it depends on the business really. If you're like, if you're a business owner who has a brick and mortar, probably not necessarily. <laughs> Like you should need like a regular website with information about the opening hours or something. You don't really necessarily need the sales page. But if your business is online, I think the sales page would really help. So, I mean, let's go back to the website. So a website is clearly a digital storefront. But with the sales funnel, it's definitely a clear part for a customer to buy from you. To follow on on your digital storefront metaphor, if your website is your digital storefront, I guess the best comparison is your sales funnel and your sales page with that is, is your virtual sales assistant that works in the, in the storefront. They kind of guide exactly. the people to here's the aisle with the thing that you're after, by the way. Exactly. That, that's, a, that's a great example. And if people need an extra hand, if they need someone to help them through the process, do you want to share your details of, of where they can find you to ask some more questions and, and take the next steps? Yeah, just simply go to www.webstations.com. Yeah, so that all the information is really there. <laughs> so I tell you help um, small business owners, mainly business owners who, who are ready to scale. Please do feel free to look up to me Um, I just want to say a quick thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for all of your great advice. This is something that I know, but I'm I'm absolutely no expert in. So it's always nice to hear someone else's thoughts and and get an expert opinion. Thank you so much for watching the video episode of the online marketing show. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can stay updated to new videos as and when they come. All I ask is that you leave me a comment in the comment section below letting me know what you thought of today's episode and what you'd like to see us talk about again in the future. Thanks very much.